In today's video, I've got a little dose of tough love for all of us, including myself, because I'm going to be sharing 10 ways that I think we waste our grocery budget money. And I'm not just talking about specific items that we purchase, I'm talking about habits, things that we are doing, maybe even unknowingly, that are costing us big. Now, I do want to say that I do not have it all figured out and that the suggestions that I am giving are stemming from my own experiences with my family and our grocery budget and times when we have had to take a good long look at how we were spending money, where the money was going. And it's also coming from conversations that I've had with people that I know and comments that I have received on my channel. So if some of this resonates with you, great. If it doesn't, then just move right along. Number one on our list of budget busting bad habits is not eating leftovers. You are in my refrigerator right now. It is lunchtime. It is Saturday. Everybody is home and everybody is hungry. So I am just getting some things out that we need to eat up. I've got a few slices of pizza that my husband brought home a few days ago. I've got some crackers and some cold cuts that are left over from a charcuterie board that I put together for brunch that I hosted. And I also have some leftovers from taco salads the other night. I've got some meat. I've got some queso and some salsa. I think I'm actually going to throw that into the crock pot and make like a little bit of a queso dip for everybody to enjoy this afternoon also. Believe it or not, I've actually received dozens of comments over the years from people saying that their family will not eat leftovers. And I'm not really sure what to say to that because it's such a foreign concept to me. I have many times told my family, you know what? I'm not making any more food until we eat what I've already made. And they just know we've got to eat this up before mom's going to make another meal. If your family isn't a fan of leftovers, you might want to consider cutting back the recipes that you're making so that you're making just enough food for everybody to enjoy. And then if it's something really good and somebody complains about not having seconds, you can just say, well, if people would eat leftovers, <laughs> then I would be able to make more. A budget busting habit that we have been addressing in my household is snacking and that actually relates to my previous point about leftovers because I found that we were snacking so much in my household that we weren't actually eating regular portions of our meals, which of course meant we had more leftovers, which left more food in our fridge. And sometimes we weren't getting those leftovers eaten and they were going to waste. And I'm not saying that we don't snack at all, but I've actually started purchasing less snack type foods like crackers and chips or bars, because if we are hungry enough to have something to eat, Eat. I want it to be something that is nourishing. I want it to be, you know, fruit or yogurt or, you know, a bowl of oatmeal or something like that. And when I make those the snack options, we're less likely to overconsume them and really only eat them when we're hungry and just eat enough to satisfy that hunger so that when mealtime rolls around, we're still you know, hungry enough to actually eat the meal that I have made with the balanced nutrition and the vegetables and the protein sources and all that. And while I do still keep a few snacky items like beef jerky and buy some goldfish crackers for the kids to pack in their lunch, I'm just purchasing a lot less of it and I'm really noticing a difference in our budget. Another budget busting habit when it comes to our grocery budgets is failing to make a meal plan. And I know that it can be really overwhelming if you're just getting into this, if you've never been a meal planner to begin with, especially with all of the information that's out there on all of the different ways that people go about this. It's just about finding what works for you. And it doesn't have to be super strict or legalistic. There's not necessarily one right way to do it. It's a little difficult to share how I go about it because I have a food channel where I make content, recipe content for a living. So a lot of what we are eating, our meal plan revolves around the videos that I'm making with the recipes that I'm creating for those videos. But even before I had this channel and did this style of content, a lot of times what I would do is just write down three or four, maybe five different meals that I wanted to make for the week. Take a look at what I have on hand, maybe what's on sale at the store, pick up whatever I need to complete the ingredient list for those specific meals. And I wouldn't even pick a certain day of 
the week that I was gonna make those meals, I would just know that I had the ingredients necessary for those particular recipes. So throughout the week, I could you know, go to the fridge, go to the pantry, grab the things that I needed for that specific meal, and I would be able to make that, wouldn't be running out to the store to grab ingredients, or I wouldn't have to you know, resort to ordering takeout or asking my husband to pick up a pizza on the way home because we would already have everything we need for those recipes. But I wouldn't necessarily plan out, here's what we're having on Monday, here's what we're having on Tuesday, here's what we're having on Wednesday. I would just have more of kind of a loosey-goosey approach to it. So you might find a method like that to be really helpful, or you might find that it's easier to go to just go ahead and plan every day out. But figuring out what works for you and having a plan makes it easier to resist the urge to, you know, grab takeout or go through that drive-through line in order to feed our family when we don't have that plan to begin with. A mistake I have made with meal planning is stopping just at dinners and ignoring breakfast and lunch. And if you are a person who works outside the home, I think it can be pretty easy to fall into the temptation of just picking lunch up every day. But just putting my standard order into my Panera Bread app, which I visit occasionally, we're talking about $11.38 for a bowl of soup and half a sandwich before they even add tax or I add gratuity. And the last time I was in Chipotle, I think I paid close to 13 bucks for a burrito bowl. You know, one of those healthier options where I can kind of pick and choose some veggies and some whole grains and some lean proteins. That can really add up over the course of the week. And when I am actually taking the time to think about, okay, I know what's for dinner, but what's for lunch? What's for breakfast? Do I have everything I need to make coffee at home so I'm not tempted to stop and get a $7 latte every day? There are lots of websites, social media accounts, and even YouTube channels that are devoted specifically to this concept. And it can make a big deal in the grocery budget over the course of the week, the month, or the year. Year, especially when you're talking about normally spending anywhere from 10 to 15 bucks on just a quick service meal. And if I need to press an easy button, I will sometimes use a meal kit to prep lunches for myself or for my husband for the week. I've done this many times, like this meal from HelloFresh, the hoisin glazed pork tenderloin. I was able to prep all four portions of that for lunches for myself and my husband this week. And even without a discount, without any discounts whatsoever, it comes out to $7.49 per serving and everything is delivered delivered right to my door, ready for me to prepare it. But they are offering a sign-up bonus today for new customers because HelloFresh is sponsoring today's video and they've got a deal for you. HelloFresh offers over 40 different choices for recipes on their weekly menu and they cater to lots of different lifestyle and eating preferences like vegetarian, fit and wholesome, family friendly, or even quick and easy. Plus you can customize the meals by swapping out different proteins or sides on select meals and upgrading to organic beef or chicken on some of the recipes that include that as an ingredient. Plus they use seasonal ingredients that are picked at peak ripeness and that travel from the farm to your home in less than seven days. So you know that you are getting really fresh ingredients. If you have been on the fence about trying HelloFresh, now is a great time because the discount they are offering is 60% off plus free shipping. You just have to visit the link in the description box below or when you sign up at hellofresh.com and you use the code MINDY60. That's 60% 60 off plus free shipping. That's a really great deal. And as I mentioned before, I think these HelloFresh meals make fantastic meal preps, especially if you're just jumping off into that world because they send all of the ingredients with easy to follow recipe cards right to your doorstep. And the cost of these meals per serving, even without any discount whatsoever, is less than half what I would pay for a quick service meal if I'm eating lunch out. Thank you again to HelloFresh for sponsoring today's video and to take advantage of 60% off plus free shipping. Just visit that link in the description box below or go to hellofresh.com and use the code mindy60 mm, man so good yummy we are back here in my refrigerator so we can talk about another thing I think it's important to consider when we're trying to tighten up our grocery budgets and that is food waste how much food are we letting go to waste because we're insistent upon making just the right thing that we want to eat instead of utilizing ingredients we already have on hand to make meals for ourselves and our families before they spoil or go bad. And you know that I am very passionate about this if you watch my channel because I have made so many different kinds of videos, dozens of videos where I have created meals for my family from items that I have hanging out in my pantry, fridge, and freezer that I know need to get used up. 
And we actually have more resources than ever to do this because not only do we have recipe books, which have been around for you know eons, we have recipe blogs, we have YouTube channels like this one, we have Pinterest, which is a search engine. So you can actually plug in like specific ingredients and come up with all kinds of recipe options for the things that you have on hand, which means that you're not only going to be limiting food waste in your house, I mean, nobody's perfect. I'm not gonna say that we never have to throw anything out or that we get everything used up perfectly, but we can usually all do better. And not only can we do better at limiting our food waste, but we're also saving a little bit of money in the long term because it's money that we've already spent. And if we actually consume the food that we've already spent money on, we won't have to go out and buy more food as frequently as before. And if you want to see this idea in practice, I have made so many videos around pantry cooking and use it up challenges. In fact, I have a whole playlist of them. I'll leave it linked in the description box below so you can see how I implement this concept in my household and hopefully get some ideas for how you can start doing that in yours. We are standing in my pantry so we can talk about our tendency occasionally to rely too much on convenience food items. I am talking about heat and eat meals. I am talking about frozen dinners. I am talking about all of the little shortcuts that we can take to get dinner on the table fast. It's sort of like one step below going through the drive through line, like it's something we can still pick up at the grocery store and we heat it up here at home and eat it, but still we're paying a premium for it because it's basically already prepared. I know if you watch my channel, you're probably already shaking your head because you know that I have entire videos dedicated to using convenience items in order to create quick meals. And I do that by taking a shortcut ingredient and then adding some other fresh items or just pantry staples or things that I have on hand in the refrigerator to create a complete meal for my family. But when I was younger, I definitely relied on stuff that was even more convenient than this. I relied on lots of heat and eat meals from the deli, lots of frozen lasagnas and frozen little microwave dinners that I could make really quickly. And it wasn't until I got to be a little older and experimented a little bit more in the kitchen that I realized that if I just take a little bit of time, I can actually make versions of those items for cheaper and usually they taste better too. So I'm not saying there's not a place for these items in our grocery hauls. I'm not saying that we can't use them. I mean, you are seeing them in my pantry right now. I'm just saying that sometimes I have to do a little reality check and look around and see how many of these items are making it into my standard purchases and whether or not I can, you know, take the time to cook just a little bit more from scratch, think a little bit ahead, be proactive with the type of meal planning that I'm doing so I don't rely on those quick solutions as much because they cost more. Now I want to take a moment to reiterate that these are just suggestions and some of them might work some of the time, others might be unrealistic. And there also might be seasons in our life when we have a little bit more wiggle room in our budget and we don't necessarily need to, you know, tighten everything up. I'm trying to give some suggestions for what we can do when those seasons arise in our lives. But, you know, there might come a time whenever money isn't quite so tight. Maybe we got that promotion or maybe we started that business. My husband and I have reached a season where we have a little bit more wiggle room in our grocery budget and we can spend some money on some luxuries and we can also be generous with the money that we're saving. I do think it's a good idea though to occasionally just do a little audit of how we're spending our money and see if there are some places that we've let it get just a little bit out of control. My husband and I have that conversation about every month whenever we're checking in on our household budget. But again, if there's something here that works for you, I'm so glad that I can give something to think about, you know, give a helpful tip. But if it's not, just, you know, put it in the file and come back to it later. Or don't. Another preference or habit that can really cost us when it comes to the grocery budget is dismissing meatless meal recipes. The dishwasher's going in the background. I'll just wait, I'll just sit right here. Yeah. Beef, chicken, pork, even, even fish, like non-meat protein um, options that are still animal proteins like fish or seafood, like scallops, shrimp. Those can be among the most expensive items in our grocery cart, and there are lots of other protein sources that we can include in our meals to make them filling. I think sometimes I tend to think meatless also means plant-based, and that's not necessarily true. There are lots of really great recipes that include dairy, which will have some protein and provide some of that richness and flavor that meat has. 
That being said, there are also some plant-based recipes that I've made that don't include dairy or meat and have been very filling and satisfying and even kid approved in my household. In fact, I'm currently filming a meatless meals video. It should be coming out in just a few days after this one, so be on the lookout for that. But I've also filmed several videos in the past with lots of different meatless meal options, so I'll leave some of those linked in the description box below. Don't overthink it. And I'm still talking about meal planning now, namely the kinds of recipes that we are making every week. And now I try to make a lot of different stuff because that's part of my job, right? I'm creating food content. But even before I had this channel, I found myself falling into this mindset of thinking that I've got to reinvent the wheel every week and I've got to come up with something new and exciting and adventurous. And I can't just make the same things over and over again. When there are certain recipes that my family just enjoys. My family likes spaghetti. There's a reason why Taco Tuesday is a thing. It's rare that we get tired of those things, you know? So I think it's okay to pick those half a dozen, you know, six, eight, 10 recipes that work for us and just make them on repeat. And then maybe every couple of months or every few weeks, we throw something new into the mix or if we find a new recipe that we like, add it to the repertoire. I think it's okay to, you know, for a couple of weeks, make the same meals or maybe make two of one meal so that you can freeze it and have it again the next week. We don't have to constantly be, you know, hunting down brand new stuff to feed our families. It can be really overwhelming, especially with the schedules that we keep. In fact, I'm filming this from the parking lot of my kid's school because even though it's Saturday, she had solo and ensemble contest today and I'm picking her up from school. And our schedules can get pretty hectic and pretty busy. And I don't always have time to be tracking down brand new exciting recipes every single week. And if you are in the same boat, I'm letting you off the hook. You don't have to do that. It is okay to make the same things, especially if your family enjoys them and eats them. I wanna talk for just a minute about food snobbery. And I'm sorry if I ruffle some feathers with that term, but what I mean is this idea that there's only one right way to do things, or it has to be a certain way, or a certain product, or a certain recipe, or a certain type of cuisine. I can't possibly change anything about the way that I'm cooking or eating. And I've talked about this a lot in terms of purchasing generic or house brand products as opposed to name brand products. And that can be difficult if we've always purchased name brand products because just something in our mind tells us that it's superior to a generic brand, even though oftentimes that is not the case. I have received over the years several comments from viewers, and I've also had conversations with people I know out here in my life outside of the YouTubes, where people have mentioned that they or their spouse or their family or somebody else that they're preparing meals for, for will not eat casseroles, soups, crock pot recipes or some other form of budget friendly cooking. And I'm not talking about cases where there is a food sensory issue or a special dietary need. I'm talking about people who are just obstinate. <laughs> And honestly, I'm not sure what to say, so I'm just gonna be honest here and say that something has to change. Either A, you're going to have to change the way that you're shopping, cooking, and eating, or B, you're going to have to increase your grocery budget, and probably, realistically, some combination of those two things. I do not believe we are ever going to see the same prices that we saw a couple of years ago. Now, obviously on things like meat and dairy and produce, there are some fluctuations in the prices according to seasons and sometimes according to economic or agricultural factors that are just outside of our control. But for the most part, we are not in Kansas anymore. And if you are expecting me to find a way to help you make the grocery budget you've had for three or four years work without changing anything, that's a pretty unrealistic expectation and I'm probably not gonna get any answers because you can't have your cake and eat it too. So very sorry for the mic drop moment or whatever the equivalent is here. <laughs> but a spoon, a spoon drop. Sorry to drop that info on you, but I don't really know how else to say that except to just speak truth kindly. This last one is kind of difficult to put into words, but I think it's important because of the way that, that it can govern several of the other points that I've already made. I'm gonna talk about my tendency sometimes to ignore needs versus wants. I'm, I'm not always truthful with myself about what is a need 
and what is just a want, something that I want as opposed to something that's actually practical and necessary for my life. I can sometimes get very defensive about something like diet soda. Oh, well, I need this because it just helps me get through my afternoon. It gives me the pick me up that I need, or I need this diet soda that's calorie free so I can stay on track with my health goals. When in all actuality, that is still superfluous. It's not something that I need. And times when the budget is really tight, sometimes we have to really examine that. I don't need chips and crackers and snack foods and desserts. Those aren't the things that are providing the most nutrition and balance in my kitchen. Those are things that I want. And this comes into play with some of the things that I've already mentioned, like meal planning and food waste. A lot of times I'm letting food go to waste, not because there's anything wrong with it, but because I just think I don't want that right now. I have all of the ingredients to make spaghetti, but what I really want is tacos. So I'm gonna go to the store and get the ingredients to make tacos and some of this other stuff that I would have used to make spaghetti is still sitting there in the refrigerator or in the pantry and it's not getting used. Maybe that's a bad example because a lot of the ingredients I would use to make spaghetti I would also use in making tacos like ground beef and tomatoes and seasonings and stuff like that. Maybe a better example would be, oh, I really want to have this steam in the bag broccoli as my you know, veggie side tonight, but I have all of these salad greens in the refrigerator that really need to be used up, but gosh, it's just so much work to make up the salad, to wash the greens and chop everything up and get the veggies and make the dressing. And I'm just making excuses in my mind because that salad has the nutrients from the vegetables that I'm looking for and I actually do need to use that up. It has what I need. What I want is to press the easy button and use that bag of steamed broccoli so I don't have to do all the work. And I will admit that I am horrible about salad greens. I just, I can't, I can't ever use them up. It seems like I'm really bad about it. Someday I'm gonna do it. I'm setting that goal right now. We're gonna use up the salad greens. <laughs> It comes into play with the breakfast and the lunch preps. I would love to be able to just eat at Panera Bread every day for lunch. That's something that I want, but what I need is just a meal to nourish me and it would be better on my grocery budget if I take the time to prep one from home. It can be a tricky thing though, I understand, because sometimes we let the pendulum swing too far the other direction and we don't have anything exciting and fun and spontaneous in our lives where our meals are concerned and I think it's important to keep some of those little treats and splurges in there as well. But I have to occasionally re-examine what my priorities are and what I am considering a need and what I am considering a want. To take advantage of that 60% off plus free shipping from HelloFresh, don't forget to check out the link in the description box below. And thank you again to HelloFresh for sponsoring today's video. Pick out one of these videos to watch next and I will see you there.